First up in this week's news, Apple have been out in full force at this year's Worldwide Developers Conference, where they announced all the details for their new mobile and desktop platforms in the shape of iOS 8 and OS X 10.10 Yosemite, and as rumoured, Yosemite echoes much of iOS 7's flat gradient-free design, but it's much more than just a mere facelift. For starters, there's a whole new way to look at the screen. If you're not keen on the bright neon hues of Yosemite, you can also flip the switch off to a dark mode as well. One tap will switch everything bright to a slick, darkened version that will be easier on the eyes as well. Spotlight is now in the centre of your screen and you can quickly launch apps with just a quick typing flash. Many apps are sporting a dual plane view with integrated information. Apple Maps app, for instance, appears as a small window in other relevant apps like the calendar. Notification centres being given a boost too. You'll get a today view that shows your full day ahead, complete with notification pane too. And even widgets, world clocks, stocks, calculator and reminder widgets are available as well, making them even easier to use than before. iCloud Drive, meanwhile, is pretty much Apple's Dropbox rival, which auto-syncs your files and folders that are fully searchable and taggable all in folders right in Finder. Safari, Apple's own web browser, has also been given more than just a slick interface refresh too. Gone is the favourites bar by default. Now when you click on the address bar, you'll be given access to your favourite sites straight from there. And there's even one click social sharing from the right hand corner of your browser. And of course, Apple is quick to brag that it's the fastest version of Safari yet. The big news, however, is continuity, a new way for your iPhone and Mac to work together in perfect harmony. You can even answer your phone using your computer as a speaker, which is perfect for anyone working at home. OS X Yosemite is available as a preview to developers right now, with a public release due in the autumn. And like last year, the upgrade will be free, but this time you'll also be able to apply to a public beta for the first time. And as for iOS 8, Apple has continued to refine the flat design introduced with iOS 7 last year, adding improved functionality into the mix. First up is a much more powerful notification center, an area where iOS has long lagged behind Android. Interactive notifications now let you reply to a notification as soon as it comes in. Just pull down and type a reply to a text message for example. It even works on the lock screen. Just swipe right letting you accept invitations to calendar invites. Your most frequent contacts meanwhile also appear in the app switcher now, giving you quick access to your friends and family, while mail has also gotten a refresh too. Just like with the third-party app Mailbox, you can swipe away emails to the trash. iOS's keyboard has been the iPhone's Achilles heel for a few years now, as it doesn't allow for much customization, nor does it give you any suggested words. But now it's finally being given a boost with QuickType, a very Android-esque addition that gives you suggestions above the keyboard as you type. The keyboard will learn how you type, giving you suggestions based on your typing style while well, the learning is done local to the device too, so you have no fear about your details going anywhere else. Even better, you can install system-wide third-party keyboards for the first time ever on iOS, so you can bet the likes of Swipe and SwiftKey will be falling over themselves to release keyboards for iOS 8. It's out in the autumn, and Apple says it will be compatible with all devices released since late 2011 though whether every feature will make it to all of them still remains to be seen. Next up, Google are giving you the opportunity to take a virtual tour of the World Cup stadiums. They've updated their maps with Street View taking you inside the stadium set to play host to the magic of this summer's tournament. 12 stadiums are on offer, and while they might be pretty empty on Street View, you get some idea of what it must be like to be at the centre of all the attention in a massive stadium. And finally, we've been waiting for an Amazon phone since last year, and now it looks like we have confirmation. The handset has popped up in an official Amazon video. You can't see much of it, but from what you can see, it definitely looks like a phone, and it's set to launch on the 18th of June. We've seen all sorts of rumours about the Amazon smartphone, with everything from budget Kindle offerings to high-end 3D skills making the rounds. But it's nice to finally see near definitive proof of the smartphone though, with the top of the handset cropping up in the promo video. The video is touting the launch of the new Amazon device on June the 18th, and shows off the reactions of people trying it out for the first time, with lots of stunned oohs and ahs. Could this be because they're playing with a 3D interface or 3D eye tracking software? Well, as soon as June the 18th comes round, we'll be sure to find out.